Hey guys, it's Joni. I am going over my top 10 today. I'm thinking about selling some of my collection. So um, before I kind of go ahead and make a decision on what I want to let go, I thought maybe we could film a little bit of some of my favorite shoes that I might not, or I don't know, maybe I'll have to part with them. We'll see. In no particular order, here's my top 10 starting with Skunk Ducks. Um, it's funny that these are actually one of my favorites because I'm, I don't smoke weed, I'm not a stoner, um, but my brother is actually born on 420, so I feel like that day's always been special for me because of his birthday, not necessarily the whole weed reference. Um, but to me, this is just a really beautiful shoe. I think it looks super perfect. Um, you know, it looks like it's faded and it's really intended to look that way. And it's really cool that there's also a stash pocket on the tongues. Up next, the Reese Forbes Dunks. Now, I know people are probably gonna think that like I'm just choosing Dunks because they're really trendy right now, but actually, I don't own a lot of them anymore because when we first opened the store, JC and C's used to make fun of me for liking Dunks so much. I wore a lot of them um, and I wanted every pair. And so I did amass sort of a, a good collection. And then um, when everybody was screaming that Dunks were dead, I made the poor decision of selling a lot of them. But um, this is actually one that I picked up after I sold a lot of my Dunks um, that I never really could find. And to be honest, I couldn't really afford at the time. Um, but. Definitely one of my favorites. It matches with a lot of stuff. I really like wearing this with like denim jeans, even a denim shirt, and just like looking like a crazy like Canadian tuxedo cycle. Definitely one of my favorites. So another favorite of mine are the Tom Sachs Mars Yard. This is the 2.0 and um, I can't own the other one. Like I, I really love a 1.0 more and I'm gonna show you the one that Jay owns. So this is like the original, this is a 1.0 version. If you see, it's like a lot more delicate. On the toe box here on the sides by the swoosh. And when he bought this, because it's so delicate, I think it was like so ripped. So the person who sold it to him actually had it repaired with, um, I forget the kind of stitching it's called, but it's like the Japanese stitching. Um, you know what it's called? Comment below if you know what it's called. But these are the 1.0s that even if I wanted them, I could not own them because they didn't make it in my size. So with the 2.0, they started offering basically in like the entire range of sizes. This was in a size eight men's and above, and I'm a, I'm a six and a half to seven men. So this is a shoe that I, I love more than the 2.0, but the 2.0 is gonna be my favorite because it's one I actually own myself. All right, next up. The Chanel Human Races. I'm not even like a huge Chanel gal, um, but I really like these because they're very simple. They're black, they're what, and black and white, and they're very comfortable. And we, I got these in London when we were there for Sneaker Con. I actually begged Jane not to buy these because they were going for so much at the time, and. I'm spending a lot of money on a pair of shoes, especially for me. Um, I'm always happy when Jay gets something in his collection, um, when it's like super rare, super expensive, just because I know like he's that guy that you know, has everything that not everybody can touch every day. So I was really nervous about us getting this pair for me. Um, I actually don't even remember like how much it was. I want to say that we paid something stupid, like close to 12,000 maybe. I could be wrong, um, but it was a lot of money and I was like super nervous. But I was just like really happy that I got these though. And Jay was really happy to get these for me. It's like a bigger flex for him, right? These are the 1994 bread ones. I'm actually searching still for a pair of 1985 bread ones. I own the Royals, I own the Chicago's. Um, I just haven't been able to find a pair of 85 breads for myself that are in good condition. But these are really, really comfortable, the 1994s. Um, you know, I've seen like a lot of older pairs where they seize up here at the ankle and they're just not fun to wear, but 
I don't know. These were these were sold to me by um, a gentleman from New York who actually has the same size um, feet as me. Uh, I think we were face we were Facebook friends, and I realized that he was in a lot of the same shoe groups as me. We were the same size, and I just kind of like waited around to see when he would let go of stuff. And luckily, he would actually message me when you know there was a pair that he was willing to let go, of. and this was a pair that I got from him. 1985 Royal Ones. So you'll you'll be able to see around the ankles on this um, just how much it's been worn out. But these, surprisingly enough, um, for being a 30-something year old shoe, are really really comfortable. It's funny to think that like this is a really old shoe, but I'm still like older than the shoe. Like I'm older than the shoe, not by much, but but these are my favorite. I think. Um, the first time that I wore these, because I was actually afraid to wear them for a while, but we were on a helicopter. We got on a helicopter over the city and I got like a shoe selfie with them. But I wear these a lot. Resin dunks. Um, some people call them the Gucci dunks and that's really the reason that I, I first wanted them. And I, I like them so much that after I wore this pair, um, a lot that it just started getting a little bit messed up. I doubled up. So I do have a second pair. I'm going to put really down this one. I'll show you. Oh, oh. So I did get a second pair, like just in case, but I'm still wearing these. But I think at the time when I bought these, I don't think I owned anything Gucci. And so that was part of the appeal of it. I mean, everybody was calling them Gucci dunks, and I really like the colorway. And to me, it felt like I was actually buying something that was kind of fancy because I really didn't own a lot of designer. So, definitely a favorite. Two thousand one BC threes. I got these, I think, in like the second year that we were in business, uh, and they were special because at the time they hadn't really made these with the you know, the box tab, the Nike box tab. But I've worn these a couple of times and I was actually on a flight where it sort of got caught on like the bottom part of the air, um, the airplane seat and it ripped my tab off. I still wear them though, I still love them. This is actually one of Jay's, or this is Jay's favorite Jordan silhouette. So I actually like to wear them because he likes them so much. Like they're, they're definitely special to me, but I think like what's special about the Jordan 3 silhouette for me is that it's one of Jay's favorites. Tokyo Fives. Um, it was really impossible at the time to try to find this pair, kind of in any size that were real, because people were just counterfeiting them left and right. And so this was actually a shoe that was sort of scary to purchase because you um, you had to do all kinds of research and make sure that who you were getting it from was someone who was legit, just because they were all over the market and you even get called out for having a fake pair when they weren't. Um, but this was a Christmas gift from JC and C's like early on um, when we opened UN. So it's like one of my first pairs of like expensive, sort of hype shoes. The vibes. They make my ankles look really fat. Which is what I love. So I'm often asked what's my favorite silhouette when it comes to Jordans, and it's the six. Probably isn't like most people's favorite silhouette, but I really do love the six. Um, they're the most comfortable to wear for me, and I think it was a, I mean, my all time favorite shoe is a Varsity Six. So when the Champagne Sixes came out, I was all about it and I wanted to get a pair for myself, but I could not find, find a size seven anywhere. Not at any of my favorite apps or favorite stores. And I actually came across this um, at a sneaker con. I don't remember which city it was. I just remember it was really, really cold. Um, and a kid had a, had a booth set up, a table set up. Oh, there goes Billy. She doesn't like this story. But um, this kid had the Champagne Sixes in my size and I um, I just knew I was gonna buy a pair. And I forget how much he was asking for it. I think he was asking something like 700, but he sold it to me for half the price and he said it was only because um, I was there with JC and he loved JC so much. So perks of being 2J's wife, I guess, right? 
I got a pair of champagne sixes, which I actually I have. A, I wore them once. I really love them, but I only wore them once. I'm just afraid to mess them up too much. So. This one in. Is it rolling? Yep. Okay. So bonus pair. I know we said top ten. I had to sneak this one in. It's the Van Diamone Rude. Um, Ruigi's brand Rude, R-H-U-V-E. Um, this is a pair that I was desperate, desperate, desperate to get when I first saw an image of it on the internet. And I could not find my size. I mean, I think that like on some of our favorite apps, there was only like a, like a couple sizes that were available and not any that were even near my size. But you know, I, I was trying to stick it out, be patient, and um, I finally got these for myself. But before I got these for myself, I actually got them. Um, I gifted them to JC for Christmas because I found them in his size. And, I mean, I don't know if he was like crazy about them as much as I was, um, but I was really excited to give it to him for Christmas because I felt like I was sort of getting a present for myself. Um, but yes, love these. We're here because we're uh, hosting a wedding and our ordained minister, it's me, Father Safarian. Teddy, Teddy, uh, Father, Dad, not Daddy, Teddy, uh, yeah, Father Teddy. Renewed his Daddy, license Daddy. on Google or <laughs> bought his license on eBay and, uh, we're, Same yeah. Club. I got Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba, uh, wedding license. Um, but we're here and we're gonna host the wedding. Thank you for being here today as Melita and Howard enter a lifelong civil union. Today we celebrate separate journeys that brought them together and we usher them towards the new journey they will embark upon as part. A true lasting marriage requires effort and commitment and unending respect. As Melita and Howard declare their love on this day, we reflect on the meaning of partnership and its importance to a successful union. Partners in life think of one another as teammates equally capable, but each arriving with their own special skills. There is no limit to what a partnership can accomplish when trust and admiration flow abundantly. Today, Melita and Howard acknowledge this excitement as they prepare to join me in the Do we witnesses today support and encourage the union? All day. Yes. <laughs> All right. As I guide you in exchanging your vows, you, Melita, and you, Howard, will declare your intention for a lasting partnership and love and marriage. Are you prepared to do this? Yes. Without further ado, let's begin. I, Melita, take you, Howard, to be my... You're going to repeat this. I I'm Melita. not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, Melita, take you, Howard, to be my husband. I promise that from this day forward, I will regard you only as my equal partner. I, Melita, take you, Howard. To be my husband and equal partner. But as my closest friend. But as my closest friend. I promise to comfort you in sickness and in health. I promise to comfort you in sickness and in health. I promise to demonstrate my commitment to you through love, laughter, and compassion. I promise to demonstrate my commitment to you through love. Love. Laughter. Laughter. And compassion. And compassion. I love you. I love you. I, Howard, take uh -oh. you, Melita, to be my wife. I promise from this day forward, I will regard you not only as my equal partner, but as my closest friend. I promise from this day forward, I will regard you as my equal partner. But as my closest friend. As my closest friend. I promise to comfort you in sickness and health. I promise to comfort you in sickness and health. I promise to demonstrate my commitment to you through love, laughter, and compassion. I promise to demonstrate my commitment to you through love, laughter, and compassion. compassion. I love you. I love you. Okay. Please present one another your rings. Oh. 
these re singleized. Guys, I was trying to skip. I was trying to skip this. Come on, man. We can't get there. We gotta earn it. What I gotta do? Please present one another. I don't gotta get on the knee again. Nah, you already did all that, player. Yeah, come on. These rings symbolize the strength of your commitment to this marriage and the love you share. So you're gonna exchange rings now. By the power vested in me in the universal life church before your witness, it's my great pleasure to pronounce you spiritually and lawfully united. You may now kiss your bride. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> That's That's you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We've had a lot of unique situations and memorable moments in our in the history of our brand, but I think as a husband and wife, myself, Joni and I. This is probably one of the coolest things we've ever seen uh, take place here at the shop. So thank you for even allowing us to be part of it. Mm -hmm. I wish you guys the best and uh, you know, thank many you. blessings. Thank you. So thank much. you. From the of my heart. Yeah, say love. We appreciate you guys. Johnny. We have another surprise for everybody. We might as well say it now since it's about to be on broadcast or what whatnot. And the kids do not know this, but we are expecting. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Another one. Yeah, yeah, this is like a double wedding. Y'all got like a a, I can see a baby, a baby and a wedding. Look, <laughs> I got like a baby birth and a wedding. The oldest one to be here before. He was so how long have you guys been together? This is our six year anniversary today as well. Oh, so, so we've been together for six years today. So we decided, so to, we decided get to get married, married and it was all spur of the moment. I proposed, I, well actually it, it went like this. I found out that she was pregnant the day before Christmas. And then after that, it just like released me to let go of all of the hurt and pain and all the little stuff I was dealing with. And I realized that she was always there for me by my side and I needed to do what was right. And of course we got a bundle of joy coming. So I just had to do the right thing. This is who I need to be with. So that's dope, bro. Mm -hmm. no, nothing yeah, else man. was needed. <laughs> yep, I just right, right. Made it happen. Said, so let's just go to Vegas, let's do it. Yeah. We've been playing it safe the whole time and we just said, you know what? We going this is worth taking the risk for. This is real love. This is not <laughs> fake. And hopefully we just go further with this. That's the plan for me. And like, she didn't know nothing about it at all. She had to believe in my passion in a sense because she was just there for me. Like, I knew the shoes. I knew everything. I would stand up on them through, you know, online or whatever. And, then I was like, just, double up. <laughs> oh man, I had to teach her just about everything about oh, the sneaker gosh. game. But you know, she learned, she was a good learner. She stood there by my side. She she sacrificed her work for what I believed in, which was just buying these shoes. And it's me, it's, si I'm really it's, just it's sitting on the shoes right now. <laughs> it's a beautiful investment. To, it really right, is, because when we explode. check StockX and we're looking at all these, I'm like, yeah, we can go ahead and give it in. <laughs> somebody wants them. Right? Ooh, somebody, so, yeah, as, but, everybody needs a 12. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, so now we just so, moved up yeah. from just a passion to now just learning more things about the, the whole culture or whatnot as far as um, investing as well, not just being a sneakerhead and loving the shoes and loving clothes and putting together outfits. It's, all, it's also about being able to buy the shoes and know that they're worth something as well. If you hold on to them and keep them right and don't just bust them down, <laughs> you'll be good. You can make some profit some way, somehow.